Today we're going to review 12 volt PIR motion sensors. We're going to cover the features, advantages, and disadvantages of each. One's an outdoor one, and the other three are all indoor. Let's get started. The first one we're going to review is this brown one. It's about 3 inches by 1.8 inches. It's a very common one. It can be procured domestically and internationally. It's rated at 8 amps. It's uh, 12 to 24 volts DC. Uh, the nut style on this is a, a drawdown nut. Uh, that means that uh, you loosen the nut up, it creates a gap, you stick the wire in, and then you tighten it up. You'll see that I write the uh, polarity and the in and out. The in and out is labeled on the outside with the voltage, but they don't give you the polarity. The polarity is with the instructions that come with it, but uh, these will eventually be gone, so I write it right on it. The unit only comes in brown. Uh, it does not have a light sensor. It does have a time adjustment on the outside here. <clears throat> it's labeled uh, 1 minute to 10 minutes. Uh, my testing at 12 volts DC, the shortest I've been able to do is a minute and 40 seconds. And the longest uh, it goes is about nine, just over 9 minutes. And it's been fairly consistent in doing that. It does have uh, mounting uh, brackets on the side, which are, you have some adjustment capability in there if you want to twist it. Uh, one thing about the, the screws and the mounting nuts is they're pretty high, and, and uh, because they come up above the surface, it's really kind of hard to conceal them and uh, kind of puts them out there in the open. Uh, so if you didn't like this, you'd have to work a little bit to hide them and conceal them so you couldn't see them. As I said, there's, uh, these are easily available domestically and internationally. Uh, one thing about this particular unit is no matter where I purchased it, uh, domestically or internationally, it, it tends to have a problem, which is if there's something within a short distance in front of it, it does what I call ghost turn on, turn ons, meaning there's no motion, it just turns on. So uh, I have a couple in the kitchen, and if one of the fake leaves gets in front of it, it turns on while I'm sitting in the living room. Uh, I have one in the garage, which has been working great. I recently left the cabinet door open and discovered that it was turning on while I wasn't there. So um, when it's got clear coverage, it works great. And again, I have two of these in the kitchen, and uh, they work fine there. And uh, 120 degrees of coverage, so that would be about the coverage angle you get. The sensor inside of this and all, most of the others are rectangular, uh, which means that uh, the coverage in this direction is not necessarily the coverage you're going to get in that direction. So to get it the way you want, you really have to play with it a little bit. The next unit is this white one. It's uh, de definitely the largest of the indoor ones. It's 2.5 by 2 inches by about 1.4. Uh, one big difference with this one is it does make an audible click when it activates. It has 140 degrees of coverage, so it's a little bit more coverage than the other. It's also rated to 8 amps. Uh, unlike the other one, it, uh, it's 12 volts DC. It doesn't say anything about supporting anything above or below 12 volts DC. Uh, it also has the drown down nuts, but it is a three wire, meaning that the common wire is shared. So you're going to have the load on one side, you're going to have the line in positive, and then these are going to be your negative wires in the middle. Now the really nice feature about this one, uh, it comes with this uh, swivel attachment and a flat attachment, and that slides right into the bracket here. So it gives you uh, adjustability. The other nice feature about this one is it has a uh, adjustable uh, light feature. So if you want to put this someplace where you didn't want it to turn on during the day, you can you can tune that in. Uh, the other item is it goes uh, as low as 20 seconds, and it goes uh, has a long run of seven minutes. Uh, they are available in North America. Uh, they are limited. Uh, I don't see a lot of people selling them. And they're very uh, easy to get internationally. One difference between this particular unit and the other one uh, that I purchased domestically called uh, Camto. I've also purchased that internationally. Uh, this one has uh, the illumination in the center. So when you plug it in and it's activated, it has a little red light that comes on to tell you that it's activated. One thing to note about this unit is the adjustment for the time. That's actually backwards in terms of uh, to the left is up and to the right is down. Other than that, uh, it's very easy to use and uh, as I said, it has the audible click. This 12 volt PIR motion sensor for indoor use is the smallest of the ones I've tried. Its dimensions are about 2.4 inches by 1.7 and it's about uh, 
0.8 inches thick. Now, you do have to add some length here because you'll notice the connectors are actually barrel connectors and we'll discuss that in a second. So this unit is rated at uh, 10 amps. It's silent. Now, in terms of the amperage, I, I don't know um, if it'll ever get to 10 amps. At, I can tell you that when I run it a really long time at 2 amps, I find it to get on the warm side, so 10 amps would only drive that up. Uh, the documentation is that it doesn't have, but online it says it's rated 5 volts to 30 volts. It uses 4 wire, but its unique attribute is in order to get this size, uh, they make the plugs barrel connectors. So one of these is in and one of these is out. And it uh, does take away from the presentation. However, these are actually very easy to cover if you wanted. You could frame this in and uh, you wouldn't even see these connections. The other nice thing about them is these are standard connections. So you could actually take your power supply and plug it right into the end. And uh, then on this side, um, you'd need to, it comes with the adapters. You need to put in the adapter to get the male connector in. And this is what they look like when they arrive, and they come in white, and they come in brown. Now, the adjustable features on this one, uh, it does have an on-off for light sensor, so it's pre-programmed to illumination. I have one in the garage, and I can tell you when the garage door is open or the indoor light turns on, it's enough to uh, uh, trigger this so it won't activate. Uh, the time on this one, it, one of the nice things about it, it goes down as low as 15 to 20 seconds and it goes as high as two and a half minutes. Uh, the ones I've used have been very reliable so far and uh, I've had no issues with them. This unit has 145 degrees of coverage. The mounting option on this is a fixed mount unit with two holes on the side that will hold about a number four, number six screw. At the end of this we'll discuss how to make one of these uh, adjustable. The last PIR motion system I'm going to cover is this outdoor unit. It's uh, rated at 180 degrees field of vision so I can see on each side of it. Its amperage rating is unknown. Uh, I've seen a couple sites that say it could be as high as 9. The, the other one I have I've taken apart. I can tell you the electronics look pretty hardy. It might be able to su support 9. These are an audible clicking uh, unit. They support 12 volts DC. Now this is the only one when you order it. You need to, do need to be careful. This one says 12 volts DC. They also sell these in 120 and 240 volts, so you need to be careful to specify that you want the 12 volt DC. The wire connections are, uh, you need caps or connectors to go on the end of the wires. It's a three wire system, meaning the common is shared. Uh, there are, is no instructions that arrive with this, so you generally need to go online. On this particular one, the blue is the neutral, the brown is the positive source, the red is the load. It has quite a bit of adjustability to it. It has a, a time range as low as uh, 8 seconds and it goes as high as 7 minutes in my testing. It can be adjusted for light uh, illumination so during the day you can have it shut off or adjust it more towards uh, dusk so it can still come on during dusk times. It has a sensitivity sensor on it to be adjust the distance. It's good to adjust up to 12 meters. Now remember with this 180 degrees of coverage, that adjustment includes that, that range of coverage. So one thing about this unit is it's very hard to kind of tweak it down to say I only want to see that. Um, it is always looking way out trying to see the full distance. So you can adjust the sensitivity down, uh, but it gets a little hard because if you're trying to get uh, like a walkway on the edge sensitive and uh, the distance not or vice versa. The mounting on these units, uh, these are non-standard to the US. If you actually go to out to and purchase an outdoor uh, mounting plate, these threads are not the same. Uh, these are different and you're going to have to do some drilling to make it fit. These units come in a gray and a black generally, although you may find some colors, uh, other colors are available. One thing to note is when you order this unit, there's variation you get in the order. So I've ordered from one supplier and this had screws in it and I could take it apart. This particular unit is glued together and I would say it's a little bit lighter than the other one that had the screws in it. So if you find one you like, you want it, may want to be consistent where you order it from. I've purchased these uh, camera bases. So if you're uh, familiar with the bottom of your camera, you, have a, you can put this on a tripod or something. And this is the thread that goes into. And then what I've done is purchased uh, a couple of security camera mounts. 
Uh, I have a white one and a black one. They're a little different. Um, I like this one in that it can go 90 degrees. Uh, this one not so much so. This one has self-adhesive on it. This one is screw. It came with the screws. So the plan is uh, to ultimately get to the point where uh, I can uh, take one of my other motion sensors and screw it on there and have it adjustable. To do that, um, I've cut off this piece of uh, quarter inch plastic um, from some lattice that you buy at the store. I'm going to drill a hole in the center and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that screw in and then mount it on here. And uh, in this particular case, I, I could use this motion sensor, but I'm going to use this motion sensor for the install I'm working on right now and uh, hopefully give it an adjustable base. So let me get this hole drilled. I already marked the hole there. And we'll get that going. And push too hard there, and it went through pretty fast. But we'll see how that works. Okay, the website I bought these from had the whole correct hole size to drill. I probably should have looked that up and paid attention. And basically, what's going to happen is this is going to turn on the base. Perfect. And then I have a mounting platform. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to screw it on. Uh, just like that, and uh, that'll give me adjustability. So let me get that done. Okay, now I've used these uh, half inch by number three brass screws. Uh, they do come through a little bit on the back. Oops, oh well. We're mounted on the base. And the white one, uh, as a that white one's nice, I can, I can go as much as 90 degrees if I want. Uh, so I have pretty much a full range of motion here. Uh, the black one is going to be it's okay. I'm, you can't go. Um, you know, if I was mounting on a wall, this would probably be good. Uh, this one I'm mounting on a ceiling. So, but ultimately on the ceiling, um, that's really not enough of an angle for me. So I'll be using the white one in this install that I'm doing. And there you go. Uh, a way to make your motion sensor mountable or adjustable. Um, I'm going to be using the same uh, solution in my kitchen um, to tune one of the motion sensors I have in there. So you can make your own or uh, if you don't mind the click uh, this style um, comes with it and uh, has a little ball adjuster or flat mount. Uh, a little easier than making your own. So uh, security uh, mount for a security camera uh, you need to order the uh, camera centers, and uh, this was a package of five. They were more too expensive, like two bucks, I think. And you'll be all set, and uh, something to mount it on.